Forgive me, father. Even Buddha, the awakened one, the master of life, had to die. But why do we say had to die? And why did even his disciples weep? We say had to die, as if death is something that happens to us against our will. Because we divide our whole experience into two parts what we do and what happens to us. And according to the doctrine of the Buddha, this is the great illusion. There's really no difference, as the joyous ones in the heavens know. What happens to you is called in Buddhism karma. And that is a Sanskrit word which means doing. What happens to you, as well as what you do, is fundamentally your doing. All the Buddhist sages have known this. But when we say it's your doing, it's not the ordinary you that you call your ego or your conscious mind. It's a deeper you than that. It's the you at which point you are one with nature. Where man and nature form a single pattern of activity. One process. Just that man is a little bit more complicated than the trees. But he goes with them. And the whole thing is one single process. It isn't that nature pushes you around. Or that you push nature around. If you're awake, if your eyes are wide open and you look at things freshly instead of with your ordinary patterns, ordinary ways in which you've been taught to think, you see that the whole process of life is something that just happens. The Buddhists call it tathata. We translate that suchness, just like that. And so when death comes, it's just like the winter. We don't say there ought to be no winter, that the winter season, when the leaves fall and the snow comes is some kind of defeat something that ought not to happen, something which we should hold out against. No, winter is part of the natural course of events. No winter, no summer. No cold, no heat. Just in the same way, there are no valleys without mountains. And we don't praise the mountains for being high or blame the valleys for being low. We don't praise straight trees for being straight or curly trees don't get blamed for being crooked. That word, ta-ta-ta, 
suchness, it almost sounds, doesn't it, like da-da-da. It's based on the word tut, isn't it? Da. It's the first sound a baby makes. The baby, when he says da, da, is not actually calling for his daddy. He's saying that. Look at it. Da. It's all a pattern. For the whole world is in the vision of Buddhism like music. If you think that the world is going somewhere, that there are certain things that are supposed to happen, and there are certain things that are supposed not to happen, you never see the way it's like music. Music has no destination. We don't play it in order to get somewhere. If that were the way, the best orchestras would be those who got to the end of the piece the fastest. Music is a pattern which we listen to and enjoy as it unfolds. In the same way, where's the water going? Where do the leaves go? Where are the clouds going? They're not going anywhere. Because all nature understands that the point of the whole thing is to be here. To be wide awake to the now that's going on. So when you listen to music, you don't try to hold in your memory what has passed, nor to think about what's coming. You listen to the pattern as it unfolds. And so watch it as it moves now. It's a dance, and dancing is like music. For when you dance, you dance just to dance. You don't aim at a particular place on the floor that is the destination of the dance. You listen to the music and you move your body with it, just as at the moment your eyes are following the patterns of the water. Your eyes, they know, they're not going anywhere. The idea that there's something that ought to happen, that is a purpose to it all, is just words, just a thought in your mind. And in order to see all this, you have to stop thinking. If you were to hear what anyone else has to say, you sometimes have to stop talking. And thinking is just talking inside your head. So if you're going to have anything to think about, you sometimes have to stop thinking. Just as if you're going to have anything to talk about, you sometimes have to stop talking and listen. And the secret of the Buddhist view of life is to spend some time every day in which you don't think but just watch, in which you don't form any ideas about life, but look at it, listen to it, smell it, feel it. And then when you get rid of all the talk in your head, all the ideas about what I do as distinct from what happens to me, or what's the difference between man and nature, or between what's mine and what's yours. It all goes. And it's just the dancing pattern. What the Chinese call Li. a word that originally meant the markings in jade. 
the grain in wood, or like this, the patterns on water. We can never put our finger on what it is that is order in nature. It isn't symmetry. Nature is hardly ever symmetrical. But something we can never define like the ridges of those mountains. Never quite put our finger on it. Is the order of nature, which always escapes exact definition. So when you let go, of the definitions, of the attempt to try to pin down nature, to pin down life in your mind so that you can feel you're completely in control of it. That's all based on the idea that you're different from it and that you have to master it. When you don't pin it down anymore, You don't try to cling to it as if it was something different from you. Then your whole life has about it the sensation of flowing like water. goes away, but it always comes back, because away and back are two sides of the same thing, to let it go.